So thank you all for joining us for our weekly virtual policy and action update. We are so glad you are here with us this morning. I'm Emily Ruddick, Executive Director of Mass Creative. I'm here with Tracy, our Program Manager, Selassie, our Operations Manager, Sophia, our uh, Programs Fellow, and Danny, our Intern. Um, and let's get started. There's a lot that we are thinking and doing, as I'm sure all of you are as well. So last week, um, for those of you who were able to join us, Tracy shared a open sourced tool um, and, and framework that created by Deepa Iyer around thinking about roles related to um, a social change ecosystem. And if you haven't had the opportunity, I highly recommend that you check that out. We have it posted, we've got the recording posted up on our website. Um, we, rec we know that there are many ways that we, that we all play in changing um, the social ecosystem, social change ecosystem, and thinking about working towards a more just and equitable and racially just um, community and society. That's the work that we continue to do at Mass Creative. It underlines the work of advocacy and a more transparent democracy. Um, and we see the, a role for the creative community to play in that um, as well. And so we will continue to do that. I want to alert you to the email we sent out on Wednesday that also had a link to that recording, but also included a number of different resources and um, work that other organizations are doing right now to lift up um, and hold, hold up um, and hold close organizations and artists of color, as well as resources that amplify anti-racist work. Um, we, I really recommend you take a look at these I'm in the chat box now. I'm sure you're seeing a number of those links. Stage Source has done an unbelievable job of creating anti-racism resources that I really, really strongly encourage you to look at. They, um, and a shout out to the Stage Source team, they've done brilliant work. I also want to lift up that we've included a link to the Mo Movement for Black Lives policy platform. Please check that out. Um, they've included a, a number of common sense policy recommendations that they've had up there since 2016 to um, advance anti-racist systems um, in our government uh, and in our society. So please check that out. So the work at Mass Creative continues. It continues as it does with an, a lens towards intersectional policy work and thinking about how the creative sector plays a role in strengthening our communities. So I wanna start with uh, some work we're doing around elections and the census. So Mass Creative joined the Election Modernization Coalition and the Safe Elections Network to support a bill that was passed by the House earlier this week. Um, this is part of our belief that safe um, and fair elections are a cornerstone of our democracy and that through our work, um, both in advocacy as well as in our Create the Vote campaign, which Tracy will talk about later, that the creative community can play a role as civic leaders. So this bill, you can see a number of the bullet points about what exactly it includes, but it really is about how do we make sure that in the age of COVID-19, people feel feel safe and have the agency to exercise their right to vote. And so not just about can they get to the polls, polling location, do they feel safe at the polling location, but creating avenues so that there's early um, and absentee ballots and mail-in voting. A particularly um, a, a cool facet of this is that the Secretary of State is required to mail a vote by mail application to every registered voter in Massachusetts, and it will include prepaid postage. Um, so that is a, a function of this bill that we are particularly in support of. So the bill is now in, it's been voted out of the House and it's made its way over to Senate Ways and Means Committee where it will then go through the Senate side of that process. We will continue to advocate and update you on that work. The other piece of work related to this is the census. So every, as you know, every 10 years, the gov federal government is required constitutionally to take a census of the United States. And this census work is integral both in terms of drawing um, legislative and, and uh, representative districts, but also as a way to figure out how to distribute and allocate federal dollars, funds and resources um, to every state in the nation. And what we've seen historically is that there are underrepresented census tracts that often overlap 
with um, underserved populations. And those are for a couple of reasons. Those populations or those census tracts often hold new Americans or new um, residents of the um, the nation who are often concerned about identifying themselves um, as either immigrants or folks who are new to the country. There are um, barriers to applying um, in terms of this year they've made it an online process that not everyone has access to internet to do that. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, there are fewer and fewer barriers for people to complete the census. Um, the census self-response phase has been extended through October 31st. So if you or your networks have not had a chance to fill out the census, please do. It was my five minute um, patience break one day and it really made me feel a little bit closer to the democracy of this country. So I encourage you to do that. Um, the other thing is in the chat box, you're gonna see a couple of links. Arts Boston has set up some an article and some good resources for how you can think about as an artist and a leader of an arts and cultural organization playing your part in the census work and encouraging everyone to take the census. So I'm going to move on to arts education. So Mass Creative has long held that arts education is part of a um, well-rounded education for young people that helps develop not only the next generation of our workforce, but more importantly, our next generation of civic and community leaders, that the arts help creative problem solving, encourage empathy, and help connect young people to the world around them. Um, so that has always been our work and we advocate that arts education should be accessible in schools to every student regardless of school district or zip code. Because of the COVID-19 crisis, we're seeing some real threats to arts education programs across the Commonwealth. So the first piece of this is that um, as schools went to remote learning, they a lot of, you know, schools had to figure out how they were going to take in-person curriculum and translate that to remote learning curriculum. And um, that, that was this semester and the summer's work. And so the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is working on that and has provided resources and plans. The other big piece of work that they are currently taking on is how they're going to, they're going to release their own reopening plan for schools for the fall. Um, the expectation was we'd get it mid-June. Mid it's now expected late June. There is a representative from the Musician Educators Association on that reopening planning task force who is working on guidelines that will um, help Educator, arts educators and school districts think about incorporating arts education into remote learning or shared space learning as that plan develops. Um, earlier this week, Commissioner Riley released a basic guidelines memo to school districts and superintendents and school committees. There's been some um, conversation in the media about this, about how, how exactly our school is going to implement it. It really requires uh, additional expenses in terms of supplies. Um, and so school districts that are already um, really struggling with how they're going to reallocate their budgets that have now been um, a, uh, excuse me, interrupted and, and disturbed by COVID-19 are now having to think about these additional costs. And what we're seeing is in a number of communities is that school committees and superintendents are starting to say, well, we're going to have to cut some programs or some departments in order to fit the, fill this expense and revenue gap. And like We've seen before arts education programs are now at risk. So four school districts sent notifications to union teachers over the last two weeks, informing them that their jobs may be eliminated for the fall semester. This is a requirement that of the agreement between school districts and and teachers unions that they have to give them a longer lead time. It doesn't mean that those jobs are absolutely eliminated, but it means that they are considering it. And it is the first of the, the warning flags that communities have that the school districts and school superintendents are thinking about eliminating arts education um, in some way to their curriculum next year. These four communities, I want to just acknowledge the unbelievable advocacy and grassroots organizing that is happening, particularly in Randolph. They are not, those families and those young people and graduates of those programs are not saying that this is okay. They are fighting like heck for those programs and it's been really inspiring. Mass Creatives works with um, the Arts for All Coalition, which is made up of a number of arts education advocates, including arts learning, 
investors, um, the Boston Public Schools Arts Expansion Program and the Mass Cultural Council and Mass, Art, Mass College of Art and Design um, to advocate for arts education. And we are working um, to provide resources that Tracy will talk about later towards this end. So now I want to move on and talk a little bit about resources and support for the creative sector. Um, we also are thinking about how these resources and support are adequately and equitably distributed um, based on what are the needs and challenges that arts and cultural organizations are facing in this moment. Um, so quickly, here are a few updates. So the Paycheck Protection Program, there, there was an expansion of that, and you can see some of the items that are included in that. But I want to just really flag for everyone that the deadline to apply to the PPP program is June 30th. There's still $130 billion available. So if you have an arts organization or a nonprofit organization or an organization in general focused that is really struggling right now, the PPP program still exists and is still taking applications. The other piece is that the Main Street Lending Program um, has now expanded and is now available for small and mid-sized businesses. So to be clear, the Main Street Lending Program is not a for forgivable loan program. It is a loan and it is for for-profit businesses, both small, mid-sized and large corporations. But we have arts and cultural for-profit businesses in our sector, and so we want to flag that for everyone. There's a, chat, there's a link in the chat box that gives you more information. The other piece is, is that the Federal Reserve announced that they are working on a loan program for nonprofits as well, so we're keeping track of that. On the state level, um, there's a bill that we've talked about before, which was filed by Representatives Barrett and Pignatelli, which will create a relief fund for cultural nonprofits affected by COVID-19. That bill is to receive a virtual hearing today by the Joint Committee on Tourism, Arts, and Cultural Development. Now, what does that mean? In normal times, it means there's a hearing, um, the members of the committee attend, the public is welcome to submit testimony and share oral or written testimony in support or opposing a bill. Then afterwards, the committee takes a vote to recommend on what's going to happen next with the bill. In the times of COVID, they are doing a virtual hearing only, and they are only accept, accepting written testimony via email. So in the chat box, there should be a link to um, a page on our website that tells you all about the process, tells you how to do it, and gives you some tips for writing testimony. This is not like writing to your um, elected official, your representative, or your senator and saying, please vote in support of this. This is communication directly to those committee members. So it's... you. It, it's a little bit different than when we say, write your legislator and ask them to support or to vote in favor of this bill. Um, but it's still an incredibly important part of the process and it's really helpful when they hear from more organizations in support of a bill. Well, or that it, when we want to support the bill. The other thing I wanna talk about is reopening. We're now in phase two, step one. Um, reopening in this phase includes restaurants that can do outdoor dining, retail spaces, and then daycare centers and camps. Um, I want to just clock that the re when they when Governor Baker started this phase and the step of this phase, they also released specific guidance for all of these industries. We know that restaurants and retail, um, the retail sectors were uh, consulted in the creation of those materials. And like always, we are continuing to advocate and fight that the creative sector, particularly in the nonprofit arts and cultural sector, be included in the guidance um, that is being developed for phases three and four, where we know the bulk of our sector is going to open. So Tracy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, so we just have a minute left, um, but this is really simple. Um, uh, on our advocacy portion of our COVID section on our website, um, like every week we have our top actions. Um, this week it is to sign up um, to create the vote. Um, our, election, um, our, our work to um, increase um, voter participation in the election and um, to advocate for arts education to reach out to your members of congress and to reach out to your state legislators um, so i'm just going to go quickly through those for folks who joined us last week we're launching create the vote 2020 our nonpartisan public education campaign around elections this year the focus is all around increasing civic engagement and strengthening democracy through voter education, registration, turnout, and the census. And we need everyone to play a part in this so that we can position the creative community as a leader in this. 
Um, I want to do a quick shout out to the Create the Vote Steering Committee that has helped us launch this and um, will help us do the official public launch in a couple of weeks. Um, um, yeah, folks can look at these graphics. We're running out of time, so I wish I had time to announce them all. Thank you to the great work of all of these folks. Um, the next piece is advocating for arts education. So like Emily said, um, there's lots of great work to be done here for folks who joined us before. There's, um, these actions might seem familiar to you. We added a new one just this morning, which is um, writing to your school committee and your superintendents. So you can check that out. And then the last piece, um, last two pieces are to continue to reach out to your elected officials, both on the congressional level, um, as a reminder, any stimulus or emergency funds will come down from Congress to our state and to our municipalities. So important to advocate there. And then the last piece that Emily had already mentioned is the, um, the bill that is up for testimony today um, is um, we're inviting you to, uh, I'm sorry, the bill that is up for public hearing today, we're encouraging you to submit written testimony. Um, and uh, what I heard Emily say that may address some questions in the chat box um, is that that hearing is not open to the public, but absolutely you may submit testimony. Um, all right, so thanks everyone, passing it back to Emily to wrap us up. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you for moving so quickly. I'm sorry that I ran out, I ran long. So thank you for being so amazing and wrap and getting us to here. So as always, share your feedback. Um, we are interested to know what is interesting to you and how we can help you better in navigating policy and increasing your advocacy voice. Um, I want to thank the team, the Mass Creative team that's on the line, and I want to thank all of you um, participants. I want to acknowledge that next week we will have our weekly policy and action update on June 19th, which is Juneteenth. We hope you will join us. Um, I, as always, I hope you all have good weekends. Um, thank you for being part of our collective work. Um, and please get a chance to go outside. All right. Bye now.